Hey there, and welcome to another episode of That Beer Show, where we really try to dive into the passion and craft behind craft beer. So, one of my favorite segments, the Definitely beer tasting segment. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit about the beers today, but we're also going to talk about certain things that you might want to do when you're sampling beer. Nice. So, first up, we have three beers here today. And before we go into each one of them, I'm just going to kind of discuss order and when to drink them, which order, ABV, this, that, and the other. So this here, we'll just go by style and ABV. This is an IPA, mm -hmm. and it's 5.5% alcohol. This is a double IPA, because it says it right on there. And this one, is this 8%? 8.6. 8.6, 8 yes. Yep. So double IPA, 8.6. Then over here, we have an oatmeal stout. With the best name any beer could have. Yes, we'll definitely dive into that as well. So... We talked a little bit about, we, we hopped on here, what, what order we would drink these in. Mm -hmm. So my rule of thumb is once you go hops, you don't go back. So with that being said, I like to start with hoppy beers. Now, could we start with the oatmeal stout? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it's my nice preference. And, yeah. As yeah. long as you start with a style and kind of progress through that style, um, that works well. And again, these are all guidelines. Mm -hmm. You could drink these beers any way you want. Just like beer before liquor, honestly. It, it's never made Exactly. Um, only thing we're trying to throw out there is things that we've done that have been successful for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you want to take these uh, cues or not, that's totally up to you. So, let's dive into the beers. So, first up, we have... A beer called Trout of Solace. Kind of reminds me of a day out on the water, Trout. Yeah, nice check that fishing. Out. It's fishing season. Yeah. So brought to you by Trout River. I do like that label. So definitely a play on James Bond. <laughs> little, uh, you know, a little cue to that. So this is a really cool beer. We'll talk just a little bit about it. One thing that really intrigues me is it is brewed with lupulin powder. Ah. Uh. So, lupulin powder. Lupulin powder. Yep. So if you haven't heard of it yet, you will be hearing about it. It um, seems to be a fairly new, I don't even know if I'd say trend yet. It's becoming a trend for sure. Yeah. Um, to give folks just a quick little info on what it is. So basically what the hop producers are doing mm -hmm. is they're finding a way to separate lupulin from the actual hop cone. So the hop cone contains lupulin, lupulin bitters beer. What's cool is, again, they're able to separate out that lupulin. That is great. From the cone itself. The cone is basically just a vessel. It just brings that lupulin into the beer. And when they, oh, make, yeah. when they make pelletized hops, what they do is they chop up the hop cones and then press them together. So you're still getting that yeah. um, vegetal matter in there as well. So they've said, let's skip all that. It's not very concentrated to have. Correct. Let's just go pellets. ahead and take that lupulin out. Um, and process that. So what you're getting is basically a product that's double strength um, from regular hops, which is awesome. And from the brewing side, you're not getting all of that beer loss. So when you know all that matter is in your kettle oh, true. and you're dry hopping with, you're losing a certain percentage of it's beer. It's like a sponge because you dry Absolutely. the hops when you throw it into yep. beer, it's pulling moisture back out, which probably pulls not only water, but beer. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, losses are big. So let's go ahead cheers. and, yeah, cheers. So big, nice, robust aroma on it. Hmm. Really bright, welcoming flavors. Like this one wants to be drank, I would say. Yeah, and again, 5.5 for me, that's a perfect ABV. Yeah. To, to carry the amount of flavor, you know, for, I mean, if you didn't tell me it was 5.5, I may guess... Six, six and a half. That's exactly what I was guessing. Um, Would have guessed. Cloudy, but not super cloudy. Really nice color. I think a, a fairly, you know, modest grain bill. Probably not a lot of flaked 
oats and things like that, that which we're seeing in a lot of IPAs these days. It looks a lot just straight up pale, a nice yeah. pale golden tone. Right, and that could, it doesn't say on the can, but that could literally just be pale malt. I mean, it doesn't have to yeah. have anything else in it. So you can definitely tell the the lupulin powder because it's a tad different than hops, than, than regular hops that we're used to. It's a... Clean, It's right? clean, and it's almost... I think the word you used, bright, was perfect. Sh mm. Sharp, mm -hmm. bright, just intense, but then fades fairly fairly quickly. I actually like that in beer. This hangs around a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's not unpleasant. Like it's you a said. nice balanced flavor, yep. and it develops. I think the you know you have the initial flavor, the taste while you're drinking, and then the, I wouldn't say aftertaste in a bad way, but what would you call that? Just a, a residual yeah. you know, hot presence that makes you want to keep drinking it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It does. This is just like, I want to keep, you it's know, very I want to keep drinking it. Um, dry too. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not overly sweet. I wonder, do you think it's the, the lupulin powder that leaves a little residue? Not residue, but a little residual hot matter? I do. Absolutely. Um, one thing reading about the lupulin powder, it mm -hmm. definitely said, you know, it will hang in your beer a touch. So awesome. Fine offering from, from Trout great. River. Well done. We like to recommend, always have yourself a nice glass of water. Has dual purposes. I have mine over here. Absolutely. So obviously gives you a little bit of hydration, mm -hmm. which is always great. Um, also cleans the palate a little bit. Now when you're jumping from, you know, an IPA to a double IPA, do you really need to cleanse the palate? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But when you're going from a double IPA to a stout, absolutely, absolutely you yeah. want to. Yeah, my name is Alan Newman. I was the co-founder of Magic Hat Brewing Company in Burlington, Vermont. Um, my inspiration, <laughs> this is really a pitiful story, my inspiration, such as it was for starting Magic Hat, was uh, I really wasn't a beer drinker. And I had this good friend who was a classically trained French chef, so when Bob had parties, everybody would go to Bob's parties because he had great food. And at Bob's kitchen sink, he had a cold water faucet, a hot water faucet, and then he had this third faucet that brown gooey liquid came out of it. And I go, Bob, what is this? And he goes, Alan, that's beer. I said, but Bob, beer is fuzzy and, 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 and pale and doesn't have any flavor. This is dark and flavorful. He said, Alan, this is what beer is supposed to be like. And so I became a fan of drinking Bob's beer. Um, I always thought it'd be fun to build a brewery for Bob to make his beer. Um, I wasn't doing anything. I said, what are you doing, Bob? He said, well, I'd love to do a brewery. I said, okay, why don't we start one in Burlington? And that was the inspiration for Magic Hat Brewing Company. You know, I, I grew up in an era when, you know, the only beers available were these fizzy yellow liquids that, you know, didn't have any real flavor to them. So I was really never a beer guy. Um, and it really wasn't until I started to experience, you know, some of Bob's home brew. And then that got me started with trying some Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and some Boston Beer Lager. And, and so those were really the early beers that, that I tried that got me interested in beer. And, you know, once I started realizing that beer, you know, just had an incredible vast array of flavor profiles, I started to get more and more interested. And that was really what drove me, was the constant, um, constant effort to try to find new ways of doing things that hadn't been done before, because I never saw a reason to go tread on the ground that everybody else was, was already doing. All right, today we're gonna talk about the pint glass. I have a love-hate relationship with the pint glass. Mostly hate. I know everyone out there probably has one, probably has several. Popularized by Big Beer, I do believe. Who knows how long ago. Most people think this is a good go-to beer glass. I'm gonna speak a little sternly here and say, I don't think that's the case. Let's look at it. What's it do for you? Well, it's glass. Beer-wise, it doesn't do a whole bunch. Another pet peeve is if you go into 
a bar, brewery, and you get a pint glass, one, okay, I can live with that, but then it's chilled, mm, no. Pint glass doesn't do much. It's basically good for water, tea, beverages, soda. Um, again, it's not doing anything for the beer. It doesn't do anything for the aroma, doesn't do anything for the carbonation. Don't think that this is really a good beer drinking glass. If you have a light, crisp beer, a blonde ale, blueberry maybe, okay, it's acceptable. Um, any beer that you're not looking to enhance the aroma, taste, the carbonation level, this will work, but it's really not a beer glass, honestly. Again, it was just kind of thrown in there, adapted. I think they're easy to print on, they look nice, but do yourself a favor, go out, get a tulip glass, even a flute, a wheat beer glass. Quite honestly, if I'm sitting at home and my choices are this or even a wine glass, I go with a wine glass. It's thick, it's just, it's just not good for beer at all. So again, if you're in a pinch and you, you, you have to use one of these, feel free, but ditch it and get yourself a real beer glass. Yeah, without further ado, I think we'll go right into Over the Handlebars Double IPA with Lupulin Powder from Long Trail Brewing Company. This one I was at the brewery and was fortunate enough to grab upon them finishing the labeling process. So they slapped the labels on, I walked in the door and bought the four pack. It does say it's exclusive, it's a brewery exclusive. You do have to go there to get this. So you probably won't see this in stores. However, this is definitely worth a drive because it's awesome. And I think we're a little spoiled being here in Vermont, but uh -huh. Long Trail, a long established awesome brewery from Vermont. So it's great that they're branching out and uh, doing some cool. Yeah, that's even clearer. It is. I didn't expect that one. because I drink mine from the can. And it's interesting. I wish the camera could pick it up, but I am definitely seeing some massive, just it must be the lupulin powder just hanging in there. Mm -hmm. If you look real close, there's lots of little crystals and it's not yeast. The crystals floating around. Ooh big just a uh, yeah. big nice but you, even the 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 aroma is well balanced yeah it's crisp and clean very different profile it is you know the abv has a little bit to do with that i still get the very similar taste from the lupulin powder though yeah again it's that it's that fresh clean you know punch of hops mm -hmm. um this really tastes super fresh. I mean, it's a yeah. week old, the can is. I have a feeling even in a couple weeks, it would still taste fresh. That lupulin powder, I wonder if it has something to do with that. Yeah, and I'm curious, you know, it's a new product, so we don't know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious what the shelf life is of it. Will mm -hmm. it extend um, that fresh, crisp bitterness, um, hop aroma flavor over, you know, a longer period of time? They gave a really funny story. I asked about the name over the handlebars mm -hmm. with this awesome label. I think the brewers were traveling together and maybe uh, without giving too much detail for their story, someone may have gone over the handlebars ah. and it was also a metaphor. So physically someone went over the handlebars yep. and then they of course took that reference, brought it into this beer, which I think they may have been discussing or developing on that trip. So I think it's an, I love when people have stories like that yes. and then this creative label to represent the story. And Long Trail is a fairly big brewery. Yes. So to still have those kind of stories it is. and to brew these kind of beers, that's great. They that's really, cool. you know, stay true to um, themselves. And 8.6, like similarly with this one where I, this was lower, I thought it was higher. If you told me this was a 6% beer, I'd believe it. So it almost goes uh, yeah. the other way, which is interesting. I would have guessed between 6 and 7.5. And I wouldn't have guessed 8, 8.5. No. Usually 8, you, you, the malt really shines through. You get a little hotness from the alcohol, but... This is just, I get none of that. Yeah, for those at home that don't know, when he mentioned the malt shining through, uh, higher amounts of malt in the brewing process will yield higher concentrations of alcohol. Mm -hmm. And of course, Brewer Will would have more to say about it, but basically you have more sugars and more malts, higher concentration of those sugars results in more alcohol, which yep. is, I guess, essentially a byproduct of 
the yeast consumption of those sugars, right? Correct, yeah. So there's more sugars that are eaten in the beer, obviously creating more alcohol, but yep. also some residual sugars that are yeah. still floating around in there. Yep. So it often comes you know, off as malty and sweet and yeah. sometimes cloying. We talked about so, uh, residual sugars and, and sweetness in our... Uh, Left hand milk stout in yes, our first episode. That is right. That is right. Yeah. So, you know, kudos to them for being able to brew a beer that's 8.6, comes off as more like a 6%. It's good. Um, Solid. Clean, crisp. Again, I don't think there's much else going on in here besides probably pale malts, maybe a touch of crystal, which I still doubt because I would get some sweetness and some color. So. Um, I think they both took a similar approach to their mm -hmm. beers, which is yeah. I want to let the lupulin powder shine through. So we're going to keep call. the malt pretty, you know, restrained and simple and let the let the hops be the star of the show. Definitely well executed. Well done. We're switching to an oatmeal stout and a little bit of backstory for these guys. So I think it's appropriate. So now we are going to drink a beer called Bennington. Which we is, are here in Bennington. We are here in Bennington, Vermont, uh, which is an oatmeal stout with Dutch processed cocoa and maple syrup. Wow. Um, and this is from yeah. Night Shift Brewing. Now, they're out of Everett, Mass. Really churning out some awesome beers, and, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty excited that they picked the name Bennington, mm -hmm. and we actually had a, a friend of the show reach out to them and try to get a little bit more information and it is in fact named after Bennington Vermont so thanks to um, him for for doing that yep absolutely so which is kind of cool so so Ryan rinsed our glasses here so we're gonna we're gonna go right in oh look at that color so that's a little uh looks like motor oil in a good way <laughs> it's a little different than what we've uh, <laughs> had with the last two or and, like coffee yeah and with stouts and stuff don't be afraid to have a little bit more aggressive pour like I'm not really tipping the good glass point. too much you know, you don't mind having that little bit of, of head on there. So. Yeah, you want to unlock that creaminess and that texture. Stir oh, man. So, yeah, right up front, chocolate, I'm oatmeal, coffee. which is interesting, coffee. I love coffee. I love chocolate. Even, I almost want to say like a hint of vanilla. I get some vanilla in there, absolutely. Man, I got to drink it. Yeah, lots going on there. Maple. Lots of good going on there. Maple comes out. Lots of tasty. Pretty strong, um, which is good. Not in a bad way, but I say pretty strong because a lot of times I'll have maple beers that yep. if you didn't tell me maple was in it, I wouldn't have known. Very true. Maple's difficult in it's the brewing a subtle, process. A subtle flavor. It is. It can be. But yeah, and it's, it's there. It's nice. Um, maple is a sugar, so a lot of times it will ferment out. Mm -hmm. My guess from a brewing process is this is added at bottling or at kegging later on in the process to keep that nice fresh maple yeah. flavor. And sometimes, I haven't seen bigger breweries do this, but I know on a homebrew scale and even maybe a nano scale, some brewers actually carbonate their beer with maple syrup. Oh, instead of priming sugar, corn yep, sugar, exactly. Like so that. instead of a different sugar, they'll use actual maple syrup. I've done it myself. That's awesome. Um, I like it, that. It, it throws a very clean, um, uh, like micro bubbled fermentation, which I don't, I'm not 100% sure why, but it's kind of an interesting thing that I've noticed. That's cool. Um, slight sweetness, not a ton of maple. Um, but and I'm also the type of person that if you're going to put maple and chocolate on your label, it should taste like oh, maple yeah. and chocolate. So I'm, I think this tastes like Bennington in a glass. I think it's a good representation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, this definitely, this is not your average beer for sure. No, this is fantastic. Um, another thing I'll point out too, um, Dutch processed cocoa. Oh, nice. So yeah. my guess is what they're doing is they're, they're throwing that in during the boil. Oh, yep. as opposed to later in, during yep. fermentation. Yeah, that's difficult because if you're using a, a powder, um, you know, without stirring it, without mixing it in, it's difficult. And in the boil process, it'll really bring out some of those flavors. Why it's the Dutch process, a lot of times is it's because there's no or limited uh, oils in the chocolate. It's pure and clean. Exactly. Right? So if you were to throw Hershey's chocolate in or something like that, your beer would have a difficult time carbonating. They add the cocoa butter. Cocoa butter and fats are part of the chocolate process exactly. as opposed to cocoa. Exactly. 
This, this is, is awesome. probably one of the better oatmeal stouts um, on the East Coast that, that I've had. Yeah. And, and there's That's, been plenty. So <laughs> There's a lot of competition. Yeah. Not, um, not to say that the others aren't great. Not at all. They are. But this... Uh, this definitely stands out in a you know a, pr- a pretty crowded field of yeah. stouts. It's difficult to have a stout as one of your main beers because there's a smaller segment of the population. Yeah. One, it's not an IPA. Um, you know, <laughs> so, and then a lot of times people, as as we know, the whole dark beer thing. Um, people, dark beer. People just won't try a dark beer. Where I guarantee you, nine out of ten people. Maybe that's a little inflated. Um, Seven, six out of ten. I'm still gonna go with nine. But if they, <laughs> if, 9.5. if they would just simply try this, we've talked about this exactly. <laughs> just simply, simply a sip would be like, okay, are they gonna drink the whole thing? Probably not. But they would certainly enjoy it. Now this beer is slightly chewy, not overwhelmingly, but uh, it's very most, drinkable. Though. Most dark beers are actually lighter in body and texture, so lower not, in calories. And calories. Well, that wraps up another segment of our tasting. Think outside the box. Don't be afraid to try a different style. Most breweries these days also are offering samples. Yep. So if you go Absolutely. to a place and you see a oatmeal stout with Dutch processed cocoa and coffee, give it a try. And maple, give it a try. You know, have a small four ounce sampler. See if you like it. Move on. I challenge you to go go to your local pub brewery restaurant that has good beers on tap and even intentionally try a beer that you normally don't like just say oh i don't like dark beers let me try two of your dark beers you might not love it but hey you might like it absolutely (sighs) to me it's about math you know so if you have a hundred percent of the beer category um about 75 80 percent of it is owned by two companies um, Anheuser-Busch InBev and Miller Coors. And then about 15% is owned by the imports, um, the Agio Constellation, a couple others, Heineken. And then that leaves about 7 to 10%, uh, depending on whether you want to talk volume or dollars, that's owned by the 7,000 craft brewers. Um, the problem is that manufacturing is very expensive, and if you don't have enough business to grow your big business doesn't grow by magic it grows by cash and capacity is expensive so what's happening is you're seeing tremendous consolidation because the small breweries um, can't afford to make investments in sales can't afford to make investments in supporting their distributors can't afford to make investments in in new capacity and there are just too many people sharing too small of a pie and that has also generated a lot of bad practices you're seeing massive consolidation today you're also now for the first time and I've been waiting to see it and we're now starting to see the decline in pricing which is great for the consumer but what it's going to lead to is increased consolidation because only the large breweries with the scale can be afford to sell beer for the price that the consumer is going to be able to buy for um, the new thing now is 15 packs for the price of 12 packs a year ago Two years ago, there was one company doing a 15-pack. Um, I believe there will be 14 or 15 fairly large companies doing 15-packs this year, all selling their 15-packs at the same price as 12-packs. We're also now starting to see six-packs you know, down in the $7.99 uh, pricing again. Great for the consumer, great for the large breweries who have scale, but for the smaller breweries, that's not a price that they can afford to to sell at and right now they're just making money on their tap rooms and there's now pressure to start closing up some of those tap rooms. Um, The whole industry is going through a massive uh, change right now. Three years is not going to look anything like it does today. Um, What's it going to look like? If I was that smart, (laughs) I'd have a lot more money. But it will look very different than it does today and it'll be a lot of consolidation and most of the distribution will be owned by the the large multinational companies. Something like 80% of all beer in America is sold through chains. Supermarket chains, restaurant chains, Mm -hmm. and the small breweries don't have access to those chains. And so the small breweries are left out of about 80% of all the distribution and consumer products, especially beer, it's a distribution-based business. I don't care how much you like a brand, If you go into a store, you want to go pick up a six pack, you're on your way someplace, you're heading home, you want to pick up a six pack, the style that you want, the brand that you want is not there. 
it's unlikely <laughs> you're going to start going to more stores to find that brand. You're probably going to pick something else up that is in distribution in convenience. And distribution runs the game, and distribution is getting so difficult out there. It's so overcrowded that I, you know, I just feel sorry for new breweries whose vision it is to create um, a brand out in the market because it's really hard to get distribution today. You know, another one of those things I think that's changed dramatically. Um, when we got into the industry in 93, 94, it was driven by passion. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have plans to really make a lot of money. We just wanted to make great beer. You know, I think that's changed. Um, you know, I think there are too many people who are in this business to make money. Not that that's a bad thing, but this is a tough industry to make money in. And so they're using venture capital, private equity money while they were growing at dramatic rates. But the moment that growth rate drops, the private equity money or the venture capital money will leave and leaving the, the owner holding usually a lot of debt and over capacity and um, suck and wind. Um, so I think that's another big change. It's less about passion today. It's more about business. And um, not, again, I'm a business guy. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, it's just a different thing. And the impact I think you can see um, in the market. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did bringing it to you. We will continue to explore the craft of beer and its unique culture. Till next time, remember, life's too short to drink average beer. Drink craft and be hoppy.